All right. Are we good to go, Yamini? Yamini, are we good yes, to go? Yes, Anjali. Please proceed. All right. So it's a bright <laughs> Sunday morning, and uh, welcome each and every one of you. So uh, good morning, and a very warm welcome to our esteemed guests and participants. Now, our mental health determines how we think, feel, and act. And in the past two years, we have realized how important it is to keep a mental well-being as well as prioritize our physical well-being. Our childhood and adolescence have been critical stages of life for mental health. Rapid growth and development take place in the brain, and that is when the children and adolescents acquire cognitive and social-emotional skills. And that is how we shape our mental health and assume adult roles in the society. Where every experience teaches us something, early in Anjali has lost a connection. I know. I was wondering if it was my connection. I was just going to drop a chat. No, no, no. It is, I think, okay. uh, Anjali has lost his connection. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, as the Anjali has lost his connection, uh, I'll uh, 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 create the background of this event that has been organized in joint collaboration with Adolescent Health Academy, Ahmedabad, UNICEF Gujarat, Gujarat Youth Forum, Elixir Foundation, and UA. Actually, in current scenario, if we see the demography of the world, one in six people are aged 10 to 19, indicating that the young generation dominates much of the global landscape. The age of adolescence is unique. They are not considered as a child. They are not considered as an adult. But it is a very formative age during which their physical, emotional, psychological and career-wise development is happening. So it is a very crucial age between 11 to 18, or we can say 10 to 25, the youth. They have been going through a huge physical changes, emotional changes, social changes. And this is also a time of great vulnerabilities. They have a lot of exposure. Many teenagers have exposed to poverty, abuse, violence, as well as the current era of pandemic leading to lockdowns, increased online studies, social distancing, societal changes, which is also affecting their mental and physical development. We have been really seeing a huge surge in the mental health issues of children and adolescents in past two years. And as the pandemic is coming almost to its end, schools are reopening, the schedules of children and adolescents are changing. I am, I hope I become, I am not right in saying that, but there is going to be a huge increase in this mental health issues in children and adolescents. And we have to be prepared to take care of these issues. As being pediatrician, we believe more of preventing rather than treating any issues. 
so let us create a pool of people with the help of various stakeholders who take charge of this mental health of the children and the adolescent and start creating awareness about all these issues so that we can work together in the collaboration with each other and create a concrete road map to make the world teenager friendly which is my motto or the passion of life and i am working things in a, a big way if we see the mental health issues of adolescent globally one in 7 10 to 19 year olds experience a mental disorder according for 13% of global burden of disease in this age group depression anxiety behavioral disorders are among the leading causes of illness and disability among adolescents suicide is the fourth leading cause of death among 15 to 19 years old the peak of their life and they are taking away their life the consequences of failing to address adolescents mental health conditions extend to adulthood impairing both physical and mental health and limiting opportunities to lead fulfilling lives and as an adult and as the government is also focusing focusing on the life cycle approach of the individual teenager becomes the very focus point for everyone as far as their physical health is concerned and the mental health is concerned i am really inviting all of you to join this movement and create an amazing work for next 1 to 2 years to create a path so that we can take care of the health of these children the third week of the march that is starting from 20th march to 26th march is celebrated as international adolescent health week and there is going to be many awareness activity happening across the globe light lime color is the theme for this transition from childhood to adulthood is the theme for this year's uh, adolescent healthcare week and we as adolescent health academy amdavad is also planning many activities i invite gujarat youth forum elixir foundation yuva unicef as well as the ministry of health and family welfare and wcd amdavad municipal corporation to join hand in this movement and we would like to end this week with an adolescent health conclave where we will bring all the stakeholders in one uh, platform and we can think talk and create the future road map on 26th and 27th so i invite all of you to join hands in this movement also and we can definitely make a huge difference today there is going to be three workshops lined one after another and all the mental health expert who are working in the gujarat related to adolescent health have joined this movement and i am really looking forward for all these three workshops and i request all the participants to stay till the end so you can get the crux and we want to create leaders out of this workshop so that whenever it is required that you can support the movement of mental health in ahmedabad gujarat and in india and going forward towards the world so thank you so much for inviting me for this workshop and the inaugural session and i uh, welcome you all to continue for this workshop today thank you so much thank you so much sir for your uh, you know esteemed pointers that you have shared with respect to mental health uh, and mental health related to uh, which is being which is one of the most important topic for today uh, followed by uh, we have doc, uh, we have uh, dr shravan chenji who is the health officer at unicef gujarat Uh, Dr. Chenji is a public health expert who is working in UNICEF Gujarat as the health officer, technically supporting the state for improving the health of mothers and children. He is part of UNICEF team, which has been engaged in the government of Gujarat in strengthening the COVID-19 response and COVID vaccination campaign. An alumnus of Kasturba Medical College, Manipal, with an MD in preventive and social medicine, he has a rich experience in working with various state governments and UN agencies. in states like karnataka telangana and gujarat in the past areas of maternal and child health immunization and covid response so i'd like you to share your few pointers with related to this uh, thank you so much for joining in yeah thank you anjali good morning everybody 
so like dr nishal but has already given a brief uh, overview of what is the significance of mental health in children and what i would like to re request your focus to be upon is the impact of what the covid 19 pandemic has had on the mental health of children as well as the parents we all had known that during the first and second waves due to the specific situations of the lockdown and the travel restrictions there were several families which could not move out of their home all the schools were closed the anganwadi centers were closed and the children could not go out there was no social interaction they could not play with each other they could not meet their friends they could not meet their educational requirements and if we talk about the vulnerable sections of the society this was the most affected when we talk about the urban slums the vulnerable groups such as the tribals the migrant groups many of them thousands of them has have lost jobs during the lockdown and whenever these families lose jobs it automatically has a significant impact on the children as well when the parents lose their jobs the children in many scenarios are forced into child labor because the family has to meet their daily needs and requirements the children cannot go to school anymore some of them are confined to the home there is no education and there is a higher risk of domestic violence especially in the vulnerable groups and also in many of the urban pockets so because of all these environment changes in the scenario and environment around children there was a significant impact on the mental health of children and adolescents starting from the first wave of covid and i can say that it is still even continuing now but there is still a ray of hope because we all now know that schools are being reopened across the country even in gujarat the schools have reopened completely and a good news is that anganwadi centers have also reopened so we can now hope that children would re resume their education and the digital divide which was actually not allowing access to proper online education to children living in the vulnerable groups such as tribal areas migrants and rural areas so that also could be overcome now because with the school reopening but it is very important for us to understand that specifically during the covid-19 pandemic because of the confinement at home there was an exaggerated screen time for children and we can all agree that because of this particular exposure to excessive amount of screen time the level of interaction the level of social interaction was reduced the physical activity in children was reduced and i i myself have a 3 and a half year old daughter and in the past two years she indeed has gone through a lot of difficulties because of no significant social interaction with other children and i urge that we need to protect this generation who have been significantly impacted during the covid-19 pandemic and who may be suffering with mental health issues like stress anxiety isolation from the other social uh, social interaction so we need to understand what issues the children are going through because adolescents may express that they are going through some problems but children most of the time will not even be able to express what mental health issues they are going through so it is important for the parents to understand what problems the child might be having and it is important for the parents to understand to seek health care from a pediatrician or a psychologist or a psychiatrist whenever the need is there so from unicef what have we been doing to strengthen the mental health interventions for children during the second wave of the covid-19 pandemic itself we had tried to develop few interventions along with the state mental health authority of gujarat wherein we had tried to develop a manual on ensuring safety and well-being during covid-19 pandemic with which we tried to train the healthcare workers and frontline workers so that the mental health in the community can be improved we have also developed a manual together with state health mental authority on psychological first aid during disasters because we realized that covid-19 pandemic is an example of a disaster and similar disasters may come in the future as well and we need to be prepared we should not be thinking what should what to do after the damage has happened and for this it is very important for the healthcare workers and frontline workers to understand how psychological first aid has to be given in case of a disaster similar to covid-19 so we have developed that module as well and with the help of state mental health authority 
many trainings have already happened in which we have they have trained the healthcare workers and frontline workers in this particular component we have also developed 10 awareness generation videos focusing on covid-19 and its impact on mental health specifically on children which can be used on various platforms to raise awareness about what is the impact and what we need to do to protect the mental health of children so these are just it is just a beginning and these efforts like how i like a, how dr nishal but has conveyed we need to continue these efforts because we need to protect and save our generation of children who have been significantly affected by covid-19 i can say for sure with confidence at not only parents but the children are the ones who are the most affected during the covid-19 pandemic because they have a life ahead of them which if we don't intervene now they will not be able to live happily as we had done in our childhood all the very best to the panel for the day long workshop thank you thank you so much dr chenji for giving your valuable informations and insights with respect to this i absolutely agree that uh, it's the efforts that will always uh, be fruitful at the end of the day and uh, working towards mental health has always always been the core uh, idea with respect to our association and uh, followed by now i'd like to introduce sharmila re Uh, Shamila Ray is the child protectionist protection specialist in UNICEF Gujarat. She works with government and non-government partners to ensure that children stay protected from different forms of violence and there is a strong focus both in policy and practice to ensure that the children might stay safe from any form of abuse, exploitation and neglect including child labor and child marriage. Sharmila ma'am has also worked intensively in this issues in Gujarat, Bihar and Rajasthan. Uh ma'am over to you please share uh, uh, with us your valuable insights on on mental health. Thanks. Uh thanks Anjali. Uh, am I audible? Yes ma'am you're way on. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so uh, a very good morning uh, everybody. Uh it's a pleasure to be speaking at the inaugural of uh, Mental Health Matters. uh with my esteemed co-panelists uh Dr. Nishal Bhatt chairperson of the Adolescent Health Academy Ahmedabad uh my colleague Dr. Shravan uh who works with me at UNICEF uh Nishra who is a very young very articulate and dynamic uh mental health advocate um and shares her experiences uh around mental health uh, the ups and the downs uh in very courageous ways uh so thank you all of you and a very warm welcome uh the day is action packed um when i see the the itinerary uh, and it's 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 full of very interesting sessions uh and i especially appreciate the fact that um, when you see the way in which the sessions have been designed uh we are now moving away from the broader uh hows and whys of mental health into actually breaking it down to talk about how is it that it uh, how do we interact with our own mental health and those with our our beloved and our friends and families inside the house uh, on our mobile phones how do interpersonal relationships affect it so now we are actually talking about the nitty gritties and details ways in which uh, we can uh, help others in the way in which we behave with them rather than just in terms of a knowledge transaction okay. and i think that's a very important step and it does signify the fact that we are definitely moving ahead Uh, in the right direction uh, in terms of also acknowledging that it's there and now we're talking about the nitty gritties and the nuts and bolts of how do we identify how do we help how are we part of this movement uh, so for that uh, i would like to congratulate uh, everybody who is involved in the state uh, towards building this very positive momentum um just a quick uh, step back so when we talk about mental health uh, we're talking about our emotional our psychological our social well-being it affects how we think it affects how we act it affects how we feel it's very very integral to our overall uh, well being uh, therefore and our ability quote and quote to function um and i think now that we have come to the stage where we are talking about the nuts and bolts of how we work through this uh, the situation and this this issue um i think the first important step is acceptance uh which is acceptance as well without any associations of fear and shame or taboo a few days back i was watching this very interesting clip by kapil sharma uh, most of you would be aware of him he's like a household name and he talks about how he went to his therapist because he was having some trouble 
uh, and his therapist told him that she had been practicing for 40 years. And he makes a very interesting quip to say that, but mental health has been around only for the last 15 years. What was she doing 25 years before that? And I think that's a very interesting segue into the fact that we think, and uh, it's a very a humorous way to talk about a very important point, which is that mental health has been around. It has been around for generations. Uh, it's not a new age issue that today's kids talk about, and it's a it's a it's a finger pointed at how our resilience is breaking down. And in the older times, we were much better at handling it. No, that's not true. Uh, it was something that went unacknowledged, uh, and I think it's very important to accept and acknowledge that it has been around and has afflicted our previous generations as well. Uh, that's a very important step, and we need to talk about that. Second, that it might uh, sometimes manifest in overt ways, of course, uh, from the outside of a person, you to sort of figure that there might be uh, issues that one needs to address. But it is not always that. There are times that we might just an absence of symptoms to an outsider does not negate the fact that a mental health condition might be there. Uh, so that's the second step that we need to uh, sort of move towards and we need to acknowledge and address that. We need to talk about it more. How many that the other person doesn't have a situation? It does not give us the right to say, it looks fine. I'm sure you're okay. No, it doesn't mean you're okay. If somebody says they have a problem, we need to listen. Uh, more people pretend to be okay than they pretend to be depressed. Uh, so um, that's something that we need to acknowledge and talk about. Uh, the condition itself is a spectrum. That's the third bit. Uh, it's a spectrum. Uh, for example, I might have a mild, mild, uh, mild headache. It might not make me debilitated. It might not interfere with my functioning, but it's still an inconvenience. It might also be a severe headache. It's a spectrum. Similarly, with mental health, some things are okay with self-care and talking to a trusted adult or seeking counsel with friends, but some things definitely require more serious um medical intervention. So it's an entire spectrum. And we need to acknowledge that not everything is put in one basket. Uh, fourth, uh, and uh, Dr. Shavan and uh, Dr. Bhatt also touched upon it very articulately, so I won't go into the details, is that a lot of the times it is triggered by our immediate reality, by our lived condition. So for example, COVID-induced stress, COVID-induced loneliness um, has definitely uh, increased the need uh, to for mental health, both in terms of demand as well as supply. Uh, adolescents especially, uh, their lives have changed so fast that before they could adapt to it, they've had to sort of, I mean, it's, it's also a breakdown in your response mechanism. Uh, so it's also uh, very, very triggered and situational, uh, which is why uh, we are talking about COVID-induced uh, concerns. And I'm not going to touch upon it because it's been very well articulated and elaborated upon by Dr. Shravan and Dr. Bhatt. Um, it is important, therefore, that we identify our uh, circle of trusted adults, people that we seek counsel from, people that we seek guidance from. Um, and while the world around us changes, especially the changes that are technology driven and we are adapting fast at sort of hanging on to these new changes and being with it, um, it is also very, very important to be aware of the pitfalls of these new kind of behaviors and uh, sort of uh, innovations and access that we have now. It's very important to keep ourselves educated at all times, especially adolescents and young people. As you go forth into the world, a lot of the new experiences are very new for you. Like it's the first time you're going to face it. So unless you stay educated and unless you're informed about what the challenges might be along with the benefits, um, it might be an area of um, confusion leading to more stress. Um, at UNICEF, again, Shravan has outlined this quite beautifully, uh, but more or less, just broadly speaking, we work with youth groups, we work with government departments, especially health, social justice, women and child development. Um, we work with adolescents, we work in schools, uh, so the Department of Education is involved. Uh, we are also uh, working with different CSO and NGO partners. We work with institutes, um, associations to ensure that um broadly again that we work both on the demand side of it so there's no stigma people are able to demand these services seek these services talk about these issues uh that some of these age-old taboos um start hopefully uh, cracking uh, we also look at the supply side of it so in terms of the services one can provide from a professional point of view both government as well as private uh we also work around uh, while we talk about supply and we talk about demand, we also work around building acceptance around both. 
um, and I mean, I, there's, I don't need to go deep into anthropology or like serious literature around this, but if you see 70s, 80s, 90s Bollywood, uh, there's this sort of tangential and comical reference to uh, Pagalo ka doctor hai, Dimaag ka doctor hai, uh, but now we see that changing and that is what I mean by acceptance, both in seeking it as well as in providing it. Um, and who better a symbol of that than Dr. Bhatt, who, who has done so much in the state uh, in terms of uh, generating more awareness and acceptance. Um, I wanted to end with an urge that Dr. Bhatt has already started with, but I would bring it in here in any case just to also add my weight to it, is that I urge uh, participants here, people that you might know, to please come together as a community which has representation from all aspects of life. Uh, it should not only be the owners of development workers like myself or NGOs who are active in this or uh, practitioners like Dr. Bhatt. Uh, we should have parents and I'm very happy to see that we have the sessions built in today as well. So can we have parents? Can we have adolescents? Can we have young people like Mishra, Anjali? Uh, can we have volunteer cardinals, NGOs to come together to build a strategy that gives direction uh, to this mandate and this joint commitment that we have in the state and take this forward because everybody has a role to play. Like I said, supply, demand, and acceptance. Everybody has a role to play. We come together as a society and we take this forward. And I really look forward to uh, that happening in the state. Uh, and with that, I would want to end my uh, address here. So um, all the best for the day. Um, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, Shamila, ma'am. Uh, I think the insights that you've shared has already given us a very push. Uh, you know, I have pumped up in, into the aspects that, you know, as an individual, we can take our single efforts, but as a whole community, we can always make a difference. And uh, thank you for highlighting those points, ma'am. Uh, followed by, we have Ms. Uh, Nisha, Nishra Sejpal. Uh, Ms. Nishra Sejpal is a law student at GLS Ahmedabad and a strong advocate for mental health. Through her experiences with mental health and therapy, she hopes to inspire more and more young voices to seek the right kind of help for the mental well-being. Ms. Nishara, I would really like you to share out your certain insights on this and uh, then we'll be beginning with us next uh, the, with the first workshop. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anjali. Uh, I have to say it's such an honor to be on this panel, to be recognized as somebody who's worthy enough to speak here with all of, all of these esteemed panelists. And it's just such an honor and thank you so much. Uh, talking about mental health in the pandemic, there are so many various things that I have to say. Um, obviously, as Sharmila said, uh, acceptance comes first. Anybody who is going through mental health issues or mental disorders or is, or is experiencing any sort of trouble with their emotional, sociological, or you know, psychological well-being that comes in the category of mental health. And that is very important for welfare as well as well-being of the whole country as well. You know, youth, adolescents, they form the foundation of a country. And if we are going to mental health problems, it is very important to consider that, that as doing something for the welfare of the country. Now, during the pandemic, there were so many issues that adolescents and young people had to face because it is not necessary that the safe space of individuals is always at home. There were so many people that I personally know who had to go through so much emotional or physical abuse at home. Obviously, along with all of the other problems like setbacks and, you know, staying at home, loneliness, all of that, one of the main problems that I saw was the abuse that people had to go through. Psychologists and, you know, seeking out therapy is obviously very important, but not every household is going to be extremely supportive of it. I am very lucky that my parents and my family has been very accepting of mental health disorders or seeking therapy, but not everybody has. There were, you know, there's a distribution of the kinds of um, experiences that people have had. You know, one of the categories would be people like me who have been very vocal about it and whose parents have been very accepting of it. Uh, the other category would be of people who do accept therapy, but they always come with those little taunts or those little, you know, subtexts that are there in the air. Okay? 
ठीक है तुम जा रहे हो थेरेपी के लिए फाइन यू नो तुम कब ठीक होने वाले हो ये पूरा पागलपन है ऑल ऑफ दोस्ट दे ऑब्वियसली एक्सेप्टेड लाइक ठीक है तुम जाओ थेरेपी के लिए बट बिकॉज समथिंग इज रियली रॉन्ग विथ यू गो एंड फिक्स इट दैट इज वन ऑफ द कैटेगरीज ऑफ दू नो ऑफ वॉट पीपल हैव टू गो थ्रू एंड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट सीरियस एंड हार्ड ब्रेकिंग थिंग्स दैट आई सीन इज दैट people who are re- going through real very serious mental health problems have to have you know stayed at home for that long in lockdown in the whole covid um, in the whole covid time period they had to stay at home endure all of those mental health problems without any sort of help from therapy or psychologist or any of those infrastructure that is set up for mental health or without any of the support from their own family members or any of the acceptance they just had to be there severely emotionally abused and had to go through that because a lot of the times the escape that young people have from their non accepting backgrounds is going out focusing on their lives outside of home and with that entire arena is just cropped out because of covid and you have to stay home for all that long while and you don't have a safe space to go to which is not in your own house it becomes extremely difficult for anybody to have or even have a shot at good mental health balanced mental health or at least a shot at trying to seek therapy which can increase or you know which can improve your mental health um especially during covid when everybody is going through already so much other stuff you know dealing with passing away of family members or loved ones and um, having setbacks in educational systems or you know missing out on internships or exams or studying all of those things that everybody is going through when people are going through tough things what you can do is you can be there for them you know to physical touch plays a very important thing there you hug somebody you make them feel okay you know and during covid you cannot show people that you're actually you cannot be there for somebody and for you people can't actually be there for you you know there there's no physical touch there's no way there's no significant way for somebody to make you feel like there is somebody else with you and you're not alone in this and that takes a toll on somebody's mental health i know obviously everybody has tried so hard to surpass this and you know to be there online be there virtually with all the hi can you hear me am i audible but it still takes a toll on somebody when you can't there is no physical touch it is very important and especially for adolescents and young people because there is a statistic that um 70% of the mental disorders have their onset before the age of 25 and that is such an eye opener in understanding that there is such an important essential window in you know adolescence to have treated that or to have an intervention in that to um, give solutions for that or to you know help with that that the most important window is adolescence and when they are not treated or when they are not addressed these issues are not addressed it becomes a whole problem not just for people that we are going to be as adolescents but for the people that we are going to bring or we are going to raise because this is the foundation for a whole generation and when this is not given any importance to or when this is not accepted or when this is a taboo when it is not understood by the people that we are around it's just heartbreaking there's no coming back from that we can try after we have grown up but this is such an important stage which has to be has to be given importance to and has to be understood there's no other way around it so there has to be some very um aggressive follow up to bringing you know integration among jurisdictions various you know jurisdictions like schools education health um justice all of those different things when they come together and give some importance and acceptance to mental health that's when it is going to be you know put forward it it is going to go forward um yes i think that is all that i have to say thank you so much thank you
so much, Ms. Nishra Sejpal. Uh, I think I uh, take forward the pointers of, you know, understanding that we all face through various phases of mental health and realizing the fact that we need really solid proof policies, rules and regulations to bring social well-being into schools and universities where it's very, very important for each and every one of us to inculcate that into our curriculum as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for your wonderful in, uh, insights. I'd like to uh, really thank each and every one on the uh, panel and the speaker list and also our dear participants who have joined in here. Uh, I can see the children, I can see the parents also joining in. So I'd like to give a brief thank to Dr. Nishtil Bhatt, uh, to, uh, to Ms. Nishra Sejpal, to Dr. Shravan Chenji and Ms. Sharmila Ray for uh, uh you know flagging off this uh, inaugural event for us and sharing their beautiful beautiful insights and work that has been done in the field of mental health uh via unicef via uh, their own individual actions and via being involved into most and most different organization governmental non-governmental and so on thank you so much uh each and every one uh we have we now we are now going to be beginning in the next session so i request each and every one to uh, to end this platform and to uh, begin with the next session which is the hum tum session uh and uh, thank you so much for joining in sir everyone thank you, thank you.